by the sort of understanding of what brings harmony of communication. Let me give you an example. I was expecting to do something. The person phones up. Uh, I phone the person and check the time. They say, oh, no, I'll do it now. Don't worry. Ah. Oh. Now, this is, of course, a surprise to me. I'm thinking, oh, now I've got to... I've replanned. I was expecting. So my response is a knee-jerk reaction, which is, basically, oh, you didn't tell me. Or well, why didn't you tell me? Now, as it happens, my daughter comes back with the response, oh, she's only just decided. Right, good thinking, love. And, and you know, but do you see, my reaction was wrong from the point of view of a harmonious exchange. And an inharmonious exchange does not usually achieve what you truly want. What do I truly want? Well, in the future, I would like the person to let me know in, in good time if they can. If they can't, well, that's different, of course. But from their point of view, for harmonious communication, it would be wise to say why it's at short notice, you know. Do you see, the harmonious communication principle is, um, am I, um, achieving a situation in which the other party will want to be considerate of me, not just themselves. Now, it could be the case, of course, that no matter what you do, the other party never considers you because they just don't, or uh, their hatred of you is something you can't do anything about, you know. But in which case, you're probably never making it better by having an inharmonious communication. I mean, better to have no communication, isn't it, than an inharmonious one. That almost by definition means you're making things worse. So if you think what you really want to achieve, which is, well, the person lets me know in the future when they can, I uh, want to encourage them to want to do that, because if they don't truly want to do it, well, it's going to cost me if I force them to do it by guilt and all the rest of it. So let's, let's back off a minute. Um, is it better to, you know, encourage them rather than to blame them by my remark here as an off-the-cuff response to suddenly finding they've changed plans that involves me without telling me. So, basic rule is, what do you truly want to achieve? Will your present response contribute towards that, or will it actually be damaging as regards trying to achieve that and then act accordingly. <laughs> I mean, it's straightforward really, isn't it? <laughs> Why I should take so long to um, get to this understanding, I'm not sure, but, well, better late than never. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Heavenly Father. Well, this is, of course, along the lines of um, Marshall Rosenberg's um, NVC, Non-Violent Communication. And he thought that, you know, he wasn't keen on the title because it's a sort of negative way of saying it. And I'm thinking that something like um, harmonious, perhaps communication, but communication's a bit sort of soulless, isn't it, as a word. Um, harmonious Living. No, no, living is a positive word, isn't it? <laughs> Life, living, good. So, harmonious living. And uh, there are principles of harmonious living, and, and one is not to have too many knee-jerk reactions. And if you can't say something good, it's best to say the minimum, the minimum, you know, oh, oh, right. 
Okay. Um, yep. Okay. Uh, I don't know what you then follow it up with. I can't quite think of a casual comment that, that hang on, let me think about it a sec. Possibly you say something like, oh, right, okay, I'll replan my day then. Um, have a good day. <laughs> now that could be dismissive, couldn't it? Um, uh, well, of course, I, if, if I'd really had presence of mind, I could have said, oh, I think you'll enjoy it there. Or, you know, I think you'll enjoy doing it. Or, um, um, how about take care driving? <laughs> How about that? A considerate comment that doesn't in any way hint that I might be critical of her behaviour. <laughs> yes, that's good, Marshall. I like that. <laughs> Have a good day is a bit dismissive, but I'll take care driving. Um, see you when I do. Bye-bye. Okay, that would do, wouldn't it? <laughs> Thank you, Dad. <laughs> Ah, oh, it occurs to me, of course, we can do better than that. Following the Marshall Rosenberg NVC, Nonviolent Communication, we express and think of, how do I feel? Connect to life, you see, that's what he would say. Connect to life. How do I feel? Oh, I'm miss seeing Aria. Now, don't say it in a way that, you know, forces it on them, but in some sense, you know, they, oh, oh, well, I, I'll miss, I'll miss seeing Aria, or, um, oh, right, oh, oh, I won't be able to see Aria, will I, or, oh, when, when will I see Aria, or, something like that, you see, something that indicates Ah, but, but that's not a blame, that's simply how I'm feeling. You're communicating how you're feeling. To some extent, it's a mild rebuke, isn't it? Um, hmm, see what you think. What do you think would give the most harmonious, the better likely response? Which would be the better response? And what would be their likely response? in that sense. Hmm, perhaps just wishing them a good day is, is better in some ways. Or to take care, I mean, you know, driving is a, a, a nice, easy one, isn't it? Um, or have a, have, a, have a nice time. Um, or even, oh, Aria will enjoy that. She'll love having you with her. You know, you, I could have been so encouraging, couldn't I? <laughs> Instead of bitter and twisted response, you know. <laughs> it's hard to train ourselves, isn't it? I don't know. That. Perhaps it could be a pleasure, can't it? <laughs> Thank you, Dan. <laughs> oh, how about... Um, Oh, I feel flat not seeing her. Uh, when will I see her again? Do you see, I'm actually communicating how I feel. I'm not blaming anyone, I'm just saying I feel this. And I'm, so I'm letting her know. And then I'm letting her know how she could meet my need. I'm not just telling her what my needs are. I'm also saying, in effect, uh, when will this need be met? And she might think, oh yes, well he is feeling flat, perhaps I should, or would, or could, but hopefully not should, but I'd like to make sure <laughs> is the ideal, not that she feels under heavy obligation. And she's likely to appear to, I mean you can't do things perfectly, can you? But you see the principle. The principle is not a knee-jerk reaction. That's the first thing. Realize, ah, 
you're angry, Marshall, or you're disappointed. Well, you can say I'm disappointed. When will I see her again? Oh, right, good. Okay, love, well, have a good day. Take care driving. I think she'll enjoy your company. As she loves having you with her. You know, whatever it is you want to. Do you see? So you recognize how you're feeling. That's before you make any comment at all. You then think, what do I, what would I like to happen that would in some sense compensate? What am I asking for if I asked? So you express your need and you express how they could meet the need in very precise terms, not just be a bit more considerate in the future, which obviously is a major rebuke and criticism, isn't it? But rather, you know, ah, um, oh, when, when will I be seeing her again? Do you see? It's much more in the right direction, isn't it? And far better than a knee-jerk reaction where you say, why didn't you tell me? Or putting the phone down because you're so furious you don't know what to say. <laughs> I mean, you shouldn't be furious. You should actually be thinking in the back of your mind, of course, ah, oh, hello God, what are you doing here? Thank you, why, why have you changed this? Ah, oh. I mean, I thought, for instance, well, I save the fuel, I'm, I'm not having to do so and so, I can do other things this morning, who knows what God has got? You know, I mean, every day is wonderful if you're alive to what God is doing. You just appreciate the incredible experience of life that every day is. I mean, even if it were the same as the same as the same, which it never is, I might point out, it's not the same. Every day is different in some subtle way that you're possibly missing, but I mean, it is different. But if you see, if your natural response is, oh, you're changing it, Lord, I wonder what this is. Oh, oh right, okay. you're changing it. You're, yeah, you're going to go instead of me, right, okay. Um, oh, when, when would I see Aria again then? Because I'm feeling a bit flat. Um, I mean, I'm sure I have a lovely day anyway, but um, do you see? I mean, there are ways of coming to this where you don't give a rebuke, you don't give a criticism, you don't give a knee-jerk reaction. You are aware of how you feel. You communicate in a nice way, not a rebuking way, how you feel. And what the other person could do that would ease your need, meet your need in some sense. And be benevolent towards them. You know, the, the fundamental principle behind it all is an integrity of concern, not just for yourself, but for them as well. And if you can communicate you have a genuine concern for them as well, well, that's marvellous. <laughs> not just a concern for whether you've been let down or not, in this case, you know, in this case. 